Hello everyone. This is Rajesh Pichaimani, and I'm a solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. I'll be co-presenting with my colleague Chintan Patel on this topic of setting up Amazon Q business with Google Drive using the service account option. The walkthrough is going to be highlighting the scenario and going through the demo on different uh, areas. One is from Google Cloud Console, another one in Google Workspace, and finally completing the configuration steps in Amazon Q Console. We will close out with the references. The scenario is um, setting up Q for business option with Google Drive as the connector source. And the end objective here is for the internal users of an organization who can access the repositories that stored in Google Drive in a natural language way. Here are some of the configuration that we will need from the Google Cloud Console settings to be able to set the Google Drive um, configuration in Amazon Q for business. The three key information is the admin email, the client email, and the private key. As we walk through the demo, I will highlight what are the areas where you will capture this information and store it in your notepad or uh, uh, editor of your choice to be able to use this when you come to the queue console. So let me switch to the demo here. Before jumping into the configuration, I wanted to highlight the official documentation which is the queue business for Google Drive to follow through the steps here using the Google service account option. Also, the another useful uh, information is the prerequisites for connecting queue business to Google Drive. Here, these are some of the information that you will be needing to set up the information in Google Workspace. I'm going to Google Cloud Console to get started. This is with the assumption that you as an user in your organization have the right permissions to access the Google Cloud Console and uh, appropriate permissions and the rules. So the first one is, as I'm highlighting here, this is a user. Let's assume that you are part of the Google Workspace in your organization. The first step is to create a project under your organization's domain name. A pro tip here is if you are trying this in your personal account, without a domain, this might not work. So this is a, a mandatory step that it this project has to be attached to your, one of your um, domain. And this is obviously going to be an organization domain name. And that will be done through creating a project, give a project name, and then choose a organization and create it. Once you have selected this project and all of the configuration steps is, will be under this project. The second step is enabling the two APIs, admin SDK API and Google Drive API. If you will be using this for the first time, or you have, if you have not enabled this before, you will have to click Enable APIs and say Admin SDK API. Click on this, select this, and enable it. Because this is already enabled, we don't have to do anything. Likewise, you will have to come back and do the same port. Google Drive API as well. So this is the second step. The third one is in the IAM and admin console. Go to service accounts. We will have to create one service account and capture some key information that will be needed in the Google uh, queue for business console. The first one is creating a service account, give a name, By giving the service account name, it automatically 
generates an email address which is service account ID and continue with create and continue and be done with that. After you have created, it looks something similar like this. You can click the one that you have created, go to keys tab, add a key, create a new key, select JSON and create one. Once you create, it will download a JSON file with a private key information and you would use that info for the continued step as well. Okay. So that's why we needed the key to be generated within the service account. You go back to the details, expand this advanced setting and view Google Workspace Admin Console. You will also have to make a note of this client ID for the next step, which we will be doing in the Google Workspace Admin Console. Here, the assumption is the person that will be working on this Google Cloud configuration is different than the person who will be working in the Google Workspace. Maybe you are a equivalent cloud admin in your organization, and then you are transferring this information to your peer or a superior who will continue with the next steps, who has higher level privileges. I'm switching to a different browser to illustrate the configurations related to Google Workspace. So this is an admin page. You go to security, access and data control, API controls, and you will see the domain-wide delegation. Manage domain-wide delegation. It will take you to this page and you will add the API clients. Here is where you will use the client ID that you just saw in the service account. So going back to the service account, say the one ending in 19106, you will have this information here. And the OAuth scopes will be obtained from the prerequisites documentation. So the first of five of them is needed. Again, because of the use case, we are trying to index the documents from Google Drive. We are restricting the authorization for this client ID to these scopes. However, if there is a different requirement for uh, Google Docs or something else within Google Workspace, then you might have a different set of APIs to be authorized. So you will include all of these scopes here and then click Authorize. Once you complete it, it looks something like this. It will show you the client ID and then the list of the scopes. You will see this name of the project as an identifier as well. Okay. So this is one information that needs to be done in the Google Workspace. The person who has the admin privileges in your organization for uh, for this Google Workspace. One thing to note is in the users that you will be one of them uh, as a part of the user group who has done all the configuration in Google Cloud Console, right? That's how you will be able to even uh, attach this project to the domain. Without this, the whole process will not work. One last piece is because uh, the whole intent of this scenario is indexing the files in Google Drive. I want to give a glimpse of the what are the files we have here. Here, there are three folders. Each one have a couple of files underneath. Four files here, another three, file, two files here. A total of seven files spanning across these three different folders. And when we switch to the cube console and complete the configuration and start the scanning, you will be able to see all of those files indexed. Okay. That's a validation process here. So to summarize these two steps, we started with the configuration in Google Cloud using your account in an organization, create a project, attach it to the domain, enable the SDKs in APIs and services, 
create a service account. Get the keys from the service account, store it in a safe place because it's a private key. Use the client ID, come back to the Google workspace, give this information along with the service scopes that was in the prerequisite document and authorize. And that's pretty much a summary of these two configurations. Next, we will switch to the Q Business Console where Chintan will walk you through the rest of the steps. Thank you. At this stage, we have completed all the pre-requirements in Google Cloud. Now let's move to an Amazon Q Business Console to complete the rest of the steps. Here I am assuming that you would have a Business Q application already set up. Now let's go into that application and click on add data source and click on google drive you can give any name here now click on the aws secret manager to add a new secret give the secret name and you can use the information which you have extracted from the Google Cloud and paste it here. Now click on save. Now click on I am role and create a new service role uh, which is recommended here. Now move to a sync run schedule and select the frequency as a run on demand. Keep other things as default and click on add data source. Now it will take couple of minutes to get the data source created. Now as you can see the data source has been created. Now let's go ahead and click on the sync now button. Now it, uh, it will uh, sync with your Google Drive data and this process is going to take couple of minutes. So let's come back after the synchronization process has been completed. As you can see, uh, the sync process has been completed and the seven document has been added. Now let's look at the CloudWatch. In a CloudWatch log, as you can see, uh, it will give you the information about what all document has been loaded and indexed. Thank you, Chintan, for walking through the demo. Let's complete this with the references. Here are the two QR codes for the documentation in setting up the Cube business and the prerequisites information where you have the relevant details of the scopes for connecting the Google Drive. That brings to the end of this session here. We wanted to thank you for your time and you. we hope you found this content useful. Thank you once again. Bye.